got no right to come in my room. Now, this is my room. Nobody's got any right in here but me. I ain't doing nothing. I just come in the barn to look at my pup. I seen your light. Well, I got a right to have a light. You go on and get out of my room. Now, I ain't wanted in the bunkhouse, and you ain't wanted in my room. Why ain't you wanted? Because I'm black. And they play cards in there, but I can't play because I'm black. They say I stink. Well, I tell you, all of you stink to me. Everybody went into town. Slim and George and everybody. Uh, George says him to stay here and not get into no trouble. I seen your light. Well, what do you want? Nothing. I seen your light. I thought I could just come in and set. I don't know what you're doing in the barn anyway. You ain't no skinner. There's no call for a bucket to come into the barn at all. You, you got nothing to do with the horses and mules. And my pup. I come to see my pup. Well, God damn it, go and see your pup then. Don't come no place where you ain't wanted. I looked at him a little. A slim says I ain't to pet him very much. I seen your light. Well, you've been taking him out of the nest all the time. I wonder the old lady don't move him someplace else. She doesn't care. She lets me. Well, come on in and sit a while. As long as you won't get out and leave me alone, you might as well sit down. All the boys going to town, huh? All but old Candy. And he just sits in the bunkhouse sharpening his pencils. And sharpening and figuring. Figuring? What's Candy figuring about? About the land. About the little place. You nuts. Crazy as a wedge. What, what land you talking about? The land we're gonna get. And the little house. And pigeons. Just nuts. I don't blame that guy you travel with for keeping you out of sight. It ain't no lie. But we're gonna do it. We're gonna get a little place and live off the fat of the land. Sit down. <laughs> Sit down on the bench there. You think it's a lie. But it ain't no lie. Every word's the truth. You can ask George. You travel around with George, don't you? Sure. Me and him go every place together. Sometimes he talks. And you don't know what the hell he's talking about. Ain't that so? Ain't that so? Uh, sure, sometimes. Just talks on and you don't know what the hell it's all about. How long you think it'll be before them pups will be old enough to pet? <laughs> a guy can talk to you and be sure you won't go blabbing. Oh, a couple of weeks and them pups will be all right. Yeah, George knows what he's about. He just talks and you don't understand nothing. <laughs> well, this is just a nigga talking. And a busted back nigga don't mean nothing, see? You can remember it anyway. I see it over and over. A guy talking to another guy, it don't make no difference if you hear, understand? The thing is, they're talking. George can tell you screwy things and it don't matter. It's just the talking. It's just being with another guy, that's all. Suppose, uh, Suppose George don't come back no more. Suppose he took a powder and just ain't come back. What you do then? What? What? I said, suppose George went into town tonight and you never heard from him no more. He wouldn't do it. George wouldn't do nothing like that. I've been with George a long time. He'll come back tonight. Don't you think he will? Nobody can tell what a guy will do. Let's say he wants to come back and can't. Suppose he gets killed or, or hurt and can't come back. I don't know. Say, what are you supposing for? It ain't true. George ain't got hurt. Want me to tell you what happened? 
they'll take you to, to the booby hatch and they'll tie you up with a collar like a dog. And then you'll, you'll be just like me, living in a kennel. Oh, my God! I was just supposing. George ain't hurt. He'll be back. He'll come back, all right? Oh, what are you supposing for? Ain't nobody gonna suppose no hurt to George. Now, sit down. George ain't hurt. Go on, now. Sit down. Ain't nobody gonna talk no hurt to George. Maybe you can see now. You got George. You know he's coming back. Suppose, uh, suppose you didn't have nobody. Suppose you couldn't go into the bunkhouse and, and play rummy because you was black. How would you like that? Suppose you had to sit out here and read books and sure, you could play horses. Uh, until it got dark, but then you got to read books. Books ain't nothing. A guy needs somebody to be near him. A guy goes nuts if he ain't got nobody. It don't make no difference who it is, as long as it's with me. I tell you, a guy gets too lonely, he gets sick. George gonna come back. Maybe George come back already. Maybe I better go see. I, I, I didn't mean to scare you. He'll come back. I was talking about myself. George won't go away and leave me. I know George won't do that. I, uh... I remember when I was a little kid on my old man's chicken ranch. I had two brothers. They were always near me, always there. I used to sleep right in the same room, right in the same bed, all three. I had a strawberry patch and an alfalfa patch. I used to turn them chickens out on that alfalfa patch on a Sunday morning. And me and my brothers would sit on the fence and watch them. White chickens they was. George says we're gonna have alfalfa. You're nuts. <laughs> we are too gonna get it. You asked George. Uh, you're nuts. I've seen hundreds of guys come by on the road and on the ranches, bindles on their back, and that same damn thing in their head. Hundreds of them. All they come and they quit and they go on, and, and every damn one of them got a little piece of land in their head. But never a goddamn one of them gets it. Just like, like, just like heaven, everybody want a little piece of land. Nobody never gets to heaven. Nobody gets no land. And we are too. It's just in your head. And guys all the time talk about it, but it's just in your head. I'm guessing somebody's out there. Maybe Slim. <clears throat> You can come in if you want. Not no. Of course, if you want me to. Oh, come on in. Everybody's coming in. You might as well. <laughs> Need to be a goddamn racetrack. <laughs> oh, you got a cozy little place in here. It must be nice to have room to yourself this way. Yeah, in a manure pile right under my window. <laughs> All to myself, as swell. You know, I've been here a long time, and, and Crooks has been here a long time, and, well, this is the first time I ever been in his room. You guys don't come in the colored man's room, and nobody's been in here but Slim. Look, Lenny, I've been doing a lot of figuring. We can make some real money on them rabbits if we go about it right. Uh, but I get to tend them. But George says I get to tend them. He promised. Now, you guys are just kidding yourselves. Now, you talk about a hell of a lot, but you won't get no land. You'll be a swamper here till they take you out in a box. Hell, I seen too many guys. Well, we're gonna do it. George says we are. We got the money right now. Yeah? And where is George now? 
in town in a cat house. That, that's where your money's going. Hell, I've seen it happen to too many guys. George ain't got the money in town. The money's in a bank. Me and Lenny and George, we're gonna have a we're gonna have room to ourselves. We're gonna have a, a ranch and, and a, a chickens and a dog and a green corn and maybe a cow. Mm -hmm. You see, you got the money. Got most of it. Just a little bit more to get. Have it all in a month. Well, I've never seen a guy really do it. <laughs> I've seen guys nearly crazy with loneliness for land, but every time a cat house or a blackjack game took it away from them. Say, uh, if you would want a hand to work for nothing, just as keep. Well, I come and lend a hand. I ain't too crippled, I can't work like a son of a bitch if I want to. So, couldn't go to bed like I told you, could you, Lenny? Hell nah. You gotta get out in society and flap your mouth. Holding the convention out here. You was gone. If there wasn't nobody in the bunkhouse, I ain't done no bad things, George. Only time I ever get any peace is when you're asleep. If you ever get walking in your sleep, I'll chop off your head like a chicken. Uh, we were just sitting out here talking. There ain't no harm in that. Yeah, I heard you. Gotta be here every minute, I guess. Gotta watch ya. It ain't nothing against you crooks. We just wasn't gonna tell nobody. Uh, ain't you have no fun in town? Oh, I sat in the chair and Susie was cracking jokes and the guys were starting to raise a little puny hell. Christ almighty, I've never been this way before. I'm just gonna set out a dime and a nickel for a shot, and I start thinking what a hell of a lot of bulk carrot seeds you can get for 15 cents. None of them damn little envelopes, but bulk seed you sure can. Yeah, so pretty soon I just come back. I can't think of nothing else. Them guys slinging money around got me jumpy. Well, I gotta have some fun. Yeah, I was to a parlor house in Bakersfield once. God almighty, what a place. Yeah, we, we went upstairs on a on a red carpet, and uh, they had all these big pictures on the wall, and, and we sat in these big, sharp chairs, and, uh, and they had these cigarettes on the table, right? And they was free. <laughs> Pretty soon a Jap to come in with drinks on a tray, right? And, and them drinks was free. Oh, then pretty soon the girls come in, and ooh, they were just as polite and nice and quiet and pretty. <laughs> Didn't seem like hookers. Made you kind of scared to ask. <laughs> no, that was a long time ago. Yeah? Uh, How much them soft chairs set you back? Fifteen bucks. So, you got a, a cigarette and a whiskey and a look at a purdy dress, and it cost you twelve and a half bucks extra. You shot a week's pay to walk on that red carpet. Week's pay? Sure, but I've been working weeks all my life, and I can't remember none of them weeks. Now, that was nearly 20 years ago, and I can remember that. <laughs> the girl, girl I went with was named Arlene. Oh, she had on this pink silk dress. I suppose you're looking for Curly. Well, Curly ain't here. I know Curly ain't here. I want to ask Crook something. I didn't know you guys was here. Uh, didn't George tell you before? Oh, we don't want nothing to do with you. You know damn well Curly ain't here. I know where Curly went. Got his arm in a sling and he went anyhow. I tell you, I come out to ask Crooks something. Maybe you better go along to your own place. You ain't not to come near Cousin Man's room. I don't want no trouble. You don't ask me nothing. Uh, you got a husband, all right? You got no call to come fooling around with other guys causing trouble. Try to be nice and polite, you lousy bindle bums, but you're too good. I tell you, I could have went with shows. And, and a guy wanted to put me in pictures right in Hollywood. Now I come out here to ask somebody I something. Had enough. You ain't wanted here. Alright, we told you you ain't. Hey, call, calling us bindle sticks. You got floozy ideas about what us guys amount to. You ain't got enough sense to know that us guys ain't bindle sticks. Hey, suppose you could get us can. Uh, suppose you could. You, you think we just hit the highway and find another two-bit job? Huh? Oh, you don't know that we got our own place to go to. <laughs> and our own house and fruit trees. And we got friends. That's what we got. And maybe there's a time when we didn't have nothing. But that ain't show no more. You damn old goat. 
If you had two bits, you'd be in Soul Dad getting a drink and sucking the bottom of the glass. Maybe she could ask Crooks what she come to ask and then get the hell home. I don't think she come to ask nothing. What happened to Curly's hand? Oh. <clears throat> oh. So it wasn't no machine. Curly didn't act like he was telling the truth. Come on, Crooks. What happened? I, I wasn't there. I didn't see. What that. happened? I won't let on to Curly. He said he caught his hand in a gear. Who done it? Did nobody do it? So you done it? Well, he had it coming. <laughs> I didn't have no fuss with Curly. Maybe now you ain't scared of him no more. Maybe you'll talk to me sometimes now. Everybody was scared of him. Oh. Look, I didn't sock Curly, all right? If you had trouble, it ain't none of our affair. You ask Curly about it. Now listen, I tried to tell you to get the hell out, and it don't do no good, so I guess I'm gonna have to tell you another way. Us guys got something we're gonna do. If you stick around, you'll come up the works. It ain't your fault. If a, if a guy trips on a pebble and falls down and breaks his neck, it ain't the pebble's fault. But the guy wouldn't have did it if the pebble wasn't there. What you talking about pebbles? If you didn't sock Curly, who did? Hmm? Where'd you get them bruises on your face? I tell you, he got his hands caught in a machine. He got his hand caught in a machine. So now get out of here! So it was you. Well, maybe you're dumb, like they say. And maybe you're the only guy on this ranch with guts. You're a nice fella. Listen, you. I tried to give you a break. Don't you walk into nothing. We ain't gonna let you mess up what we guys are gonna do. You let this guy alone and get the hell home. You ain't telling me what to do. I got a right to talk to anybody I want to. Why, you? 